The Justice Party, officially the South Indian Liberal Federation, was a political party in the Madras Presidency of British India. It was established in on November 20, 1916 in Victoria Memorial Hall in Madras by T. M. Nair and P. Theogaraya Chetty as a result of a series of non-Brahmin conferences and meetings in the Presidency. Communal division between Brahmins and non-Brahmins began in the Presidency during the late 19th and early 20th century, mainly due to caste prejudices and disproportionate Brahminical representation in government jobs. The Justice Party's foundation marked the culmination of several efforts to establish an organization to represent the non Brahmins in Madras and is seen as the start of the Dravidian movement. During its early years, the party was involved in petitioning the imperial administrative bodies and British politicians demanding more representation for non Brahmins in government. When a diarchical system of administration was established due to the 1919 Montague Kelmsford reforms, the Justice Party took part in presidential governance. In 1920, it won the first direct elections in the presidency and formed the government. For the next 17 years, it formed four out of the five ministries and was in power for 13 years. It was the main political alternative to the nationalist Indian National Congress in Madras. After it lost to the Congress in the 1937 election, it never recovered. It came under the leadership of Perry R. E. V. Ramaswamy and his self-respect movement. In 1944, Periyar transformed the Justice Party into the social organization Dravidar Kazhagam and withdrew it from electoral politics. A rebel faction that called itself the original Justice Party, survived to contest one final election, in 1952. The Justice Party was isolated in contemporary Indian politics by its many controversial activities. It opposed Brahmins in civil service and politics, and this anti-Brahmin attitude shaped many of its ideas and policies. It opposed Annie Besant and her home rule movement, because it believed home rule would benefit the Brahmins. The party also campaigned against the non-cooperation movement in the presidency. It was at odds with M. K. Gandhi, primarily due to his praise for Brahminism. Its mistrust of the Brahmin-dominated Congress led it to adopt a hostile stance toward the Indian independence movement. The Justice Party's period in power is remembered for the introduction of caste-based reservations, and educational and religious reform. In opposition it is remembered for participating in the anti-Hindi agitations of 1937-40. The party had a role in creation of Andhra and Annamalai universities and for developing the area around present-day Thiagaroya Nagar in Madras city. The Justice Party and the Dravidar Kazhagam are the ideological predecessors of present-day Dravidian parties like the Dravida Munaitra Kazhagam and the All India Anna Dravida Munaitra Kazhagam, which have ruled Tamil Nadu one of the successor states to Madras Presidency continuously since 1967. <laughs> <laughs> Background Brahmin, non-Brahmin divide The Brahmins in Madras Presidency enjoyed a higher position in India's social hierarchy. By the 1850s, Telugu and Tamil Brahmins comprising only 3.2% of the population began to increase their political power by filling most of the jobs which were open to Indian men at that time. They dominated the administrative services and the newly created urban professions in the 19th and early 20th century. The higher literacy and English language proficiency among Brahmins were instrumental in this ascendancy. The political, social, and economical divide between Brahmins and non-Brahmins became more apparent in the beginning of the 20th century. This breach was further exaggerated by Annie Besant and her Home Rule for India movement. The following table shows the distribution of selected jobs among different caste groups in 1912 in Madras Presidency. The dominance of Brahmins was also evident in the membership of the Madras Legislative Council. During 1910-20, eight out of the nine official members appointed by the Governor of Madras were Brahmins. Apart from the appointed members, Brahmins also formed the majority of the members elected to the council from the district boards and municipalities. During this period the Madras Province Congress Committee regional branch of the Indian National Congress was also dominated by Brahmins. 
Of the eleven major newspapers and magazines in the presidency, two the Madras Mail and Madras Times were run by Europeans sympathetic to the Crown, three were evangelical non-political periodicals, four the Hindu, Indian Review, Swedasamithran and Andhra Patrika were published by Brahmins while New India, run by Annie Besant was sympathetic to the Brahmins. This dominance was denounced by the non-Brahmin leaders in the form of pamphlets and open letters written to the Madras governor. The earliest examples of such pamphlets are the ones authored by the pseudonymous author calling himself Fair Play in 1895. By the second decade of the 20th century, the Brahmins of the presidency were themselves divided into three factions. These were the Mylapore faction comprising Chetpet Iyers and Vebakam Iyengars, the Egmer faction led by the editor of the Hindu, Kasturi Ranga Iyengar and the Salem nationalists led by C. Rajagopalachari. A fourth non-Brahmin faction rose to compete with them and became the Justice Party. <laughs> <laughs> British policies, seeds of communal division Historians differ about the extent of British influence in the evolution of the non-Brahmin movement. Kathleen Goff argues that although England played a role, the Dravidian movement had a bigger influence in South India. Eugene F. Urshik in Political and Social Conflict in South India, The Non-Brahmin Movement and Tamil Separatism, 1916-1929 holds the view that British officials sought to instigate the growth of non-Brahminism, but does not characterise it as simply a product of that policy. David. A. Washbrook disagrees with Urshik in the emergence of provincial politics, the Madras Presidency 1870-1920, and states, "...non-Brahmanism became for a time synonymous with anti-nationalism—a fact which surely indicates its origins as a product of government policy." Washbrook's portrayal has been contested by P. Rajaraman in The Justice Party, A Historical Perspective, 1916-37, who argues that the movement was an inevitable result of long-standing social cleavage between Brahmins and non-Brahmins. The British role in the development of the non-Brahmin movement is broadly accepted by some historians. The statistics used by non-Brahmin leaders in their 1916 manifesto were prepared by senior Indian civil service officers for submission to the Public Services Commission. The Mylapur Brahmin faction rose to prominence in the early 20th century. England, while acknowledging its usefulness, was wary and supported non-Brahmins for several government posts. They sought to weaken the Mylapurian Brahmins by incorporating non-Brahmins in several government posts. An early example was the appointment of C. Sankaran Nair to a high court bench job in 1903 by Lord Amptal solely because Nair was a non-Brahmin. The job fell vacant after Bashiam Iyengar left. V. Krishnaswamy Iyer was expected to succeed him. He was a vocal opponent of the Mylapore Brahmins and advocated the induction of non-Brahmin members in the government. In 1912, under the influence of Sir Alexander Cardew, the Madras Secretariat, for the first time used Brahmin or non-Brahmin as a criterion for job appointments. By 1918, it was maintaining a list of Brahmins and non-Brahmins, preferring the latter. <laughs> Early non-Brahmin associations Identity politics among linguistic groups was common in British India. In every area, some groups considered the British less threatening than a Congress-led independent government. In 1909, two lawyers, P. Subramaniam and M. Purushottam Naidu, announced plans to establish an organisation named the Madras Non-Brahmin Association and recruit a thousand non-Brahmin members before October 1909. They elicited no response from the non-Brahmin populace and the organization never saw the light of the day. Later in 1912, disaffected non-Brahmin members of the bureaucracy like Saravana Pillai, G. Virasamy Naidu, Doreswami Naidu and S. Narayanaswamy Naidu established the Madras United League, with C. Natesa Mudalir as secretary. The league restricted itself to social activities and distanced itself from contemporary politics. On 1 October 1912, the League was reorganized and renamed as the Madras Dravidian Association. The association opened many branches in Madras city. Its main achievement was to establish a hostel for non-Brahmin students. It also organized annual at-home functions for non-Brahmin graduates and published books presenting their demands. Topic. 
Formation In the 1916 elections to the Imperial Legislative Council, the non-Brahmin candidates T. M. Nair from Southern Districts constituency and P. Ramarayanangar from Landlords constituency were defeated by the Brahmin candidates V. S. Srinivasa Sastri and K. V. Ringaswamy Iyengar. The same year P. Theogaraya Chetty and Kirma Venkata Reddy Naidu lost to Brahmin candidates with Home Rule League support in local council elections. These defeats increased animosity in the formation of a political organization to represent non-Brahmin interests. On 20 November 1916, about 30 prominent non-Brahmin leaders met in Victoria Public Hall under Chetty and T. M. Nair. They established the South Indian People's Association to publish English, Tamil and Telugu newspapers to publicize grievances of non-Brahmins. Chetty became the secretary. Chetty and Nair had been political rivals in the Madras Corporation Council, but Natessa Mutalir was able to reconcile their differences. The meeting also formed the ''South Indian Liberal Federation'' as a political association. Later, the association came to be popularly called the ''Justice Party'' after the English Daily Justice published by it. In December 1916, the association published ''The Non-Brahmin Manifesto'' affirmed its loyalty and faith in the British Raj, but decried Brahmanich bureaucratic dominance and urged for non-Brahmins to "...press their claims as against the virtual domination of the Brahmin caste." The manifesto was harshly criticised by the nationalist newspaper The Hindu on 20 December 1916. It is with much pain and surprise that we have perused this document. It gives a manifestly unfair and distorted representation of many of the matters to which it makes reference. It can serve no purpose but it is bound to create bad blood between persons belonging to the great Indian community. The periodical Hindu Nesan, questioned the timing of the new association. The New Age, Home Rule Movement's newspaper, dismissed it and predicted its premature death. By February 1917, the SIPA joint stock company had raised money by selling 640 shares of 100 rupees each. The money purchased a printing press and the group hired C. Karanakara Menon to edit a newspaper which was to be called Justice. However, negotiations with Menon broke down and Nair himself took over as honorary editor with P. N. Raman Pillai and M. S. Purnalingam Pillai as sub-editors. The first issue came out on 26 February 1917. A Tamil newspaper called Dravidan, edited by Bhaktivatsalam Pillai, was started in June 1917. The party also purchased the Telugu newspaper Andhra Prakasika edited by A.C. Parthasarathy Naidu. Later in 1919, both were converted to weeklies due to financial constraints. On the 19th of August 1917, the first non-Brahmin conference was convened at Coimbatore under the presidency of Ramarayanangar. In the following months, several non-Brahmin conferences were organized. On 18 October, the party published its objectives as formed by T.M. Nair in the Hindu. One, to create and promote the education, social, economic, political, material and moral progress of all communities in southern India other than Brahmins too, to discuss public questions and make a true and timely representation to government of the views and interests of the people of southern India with the object of safeguarding and promoting the interests of all communities other than Brahmins and three, to disseminate by public lectures, by distribution of literature and by other means sound and liberal views in regard to public opinion. Between August and December 1917, when the first confederation of the party was held, conferences were organized all over the Madras Presidency at Coimbatore, Bikavol, Palivanla, Beswada, Salem, and Tirunelveli. These conferences and other meetings symbolized the arrival of the SILF as a non Brahmin political organization. <laughs> Early history 1916 During 1916–20, the Justice Party struggled against the Egmer and Mylapore factions to convince the British government and public to support communal representation for non-Brahmins in the presidency. Rajagopalachari's followers advocated non-cooperation with the British. <laughs> Conflict with Home Rule Movement In 1916, Annie Besant, the leader of the Theosophical Society became involved in the Indian independence movement and founded the Home Rule League. 
She based her activities in Madras and many of her political associates were Tamil Brahmins. She viewed India as a single homogeneous entity bound by similar religious, philosophical, cultural characteristics and an Indian caste system. Many of the ideas she articulated about Indian culture were based on Puranas, Manumriti and Vedas, whose values were questioned by educated non-Brahmins. Even before the League's founding, Besant and Nair had clashed over an article in Nair's medical journal Antiseptic, questioning the sexual practices of the theosophist Charles Webster Leadbeater. In 1913, Besant lost a defamation suit against Nair over the article, Besant's association with Brahmins and her vision of a homogeneous India based on Brahminical values brought her into direct conflict with justice. The December 1916, Non-Brahmin Manifesto voiced its opposition to the Home Rule movement. The manifesto was criticized by the Home Rule periodical New India. Justice opposed the Home Rule movement and the party newspapers derisively nicknamed Besant as the Irish Brahmini. Dravidan, the Tamil language mouthpiece of the party, ran headlines such as Home Rule as Brahmin's Rule. All three of the party's newspapers ran articles and opinions pieces critical of the Home Rule movement and the League on a daily basis. Some of these justice articles were later published in book form as the evolution of Annie Besant. Nair described the Home Rule movement as an agitation carried on by a white woman particularly immune from the risks of government action, whose rewards would be reaped by the Brahmins. <laughs> Demand for communal representation On 20 August 1917, Edwin Montagu, the Secretary of State for India, proposed political reforms to increase representation of Indians in the government and to develop self-governing institutions. This announcement increased the division among the non-Brahmin political leaders of the presidency. Justice organized a series of conferences in late August to support its claims. Theogaraya Chetty, cabled Montagu asking for communal representation in the provincial legislature for non-Brahmins. He demanded a system similar to the one granted to Muslims by the Minto Morley reforms of 1909 separate electorates and reserved seats. The non Brahmin members from Congress formed the Madras Presidency Association MPA to compete with justice. Perry R. E. V. Ramaswamy, T. A. V. Nathan Kalyanasundaram Mudalir, P. Varadarahulu Naidu, and Kasava Pillai were among the non Brahmin leaders involved in creating MPA. MPA was supported by the Brahmin nationalist newspaper The Hindu. Justice denounced MPA as a Brahmin creation intended to weaken their cause. On 14 December 1917, Montagu arrived at Madras to listen to comments on the proposed reforms. O. Kandaswamy Chetty Justice and Kasava Pillai MPA and two other non-Brahmin delegations presented to Montagu. Justice and MPA both requested communal reservation for Balia Naidus, Pilais and Mudaliers, Velalas, Chetis and the Panchamas, along with four Brahmin groups. Pilai convinced the Madras Province Congress Committee to support the MPA, Justice position. British authorities, including Governor Baron Pentland and Themadras Mail supported communal representation. But Montagu was not inclined to extend communal representation to subgroups. The Montague Kelmsford Report on Indian Constitutional Reforms, issued on 2 July 1918, denied the request. At a meeting held in Thanjavur, the party dispatched T. M. Nair to London to lobby for extending communal representation. Dr. Nair arrived in June 1918 and worked into December, attended various meetings, addressed members of parliament, MPs, and wrote articles and pamphlets. However, the party refused to cooperate with the Southborough Committee that was appointed to draw up the franchise framework for the proposed reforms, because Brahmins V.S. Srinivasa Sastri and Surendranath Banerjee were committee members. Justice secured the support of many Indian and non Indian members of Indian civil service for communal representation. The Joint Select Committee held hearings during 1919 20 to finalize the Government of India Bill, which would implement the reforms. A justice delegation composed of Arkot Ramasamy Mudalir, Kirma Venkata Reddy Naidu, Koka Appa Rao Naidu and LK Tulasaram, attended the hearings. Ramarayanangar also represented the All India Landholder Association and the Madras Zamindar Association. Reddy Naidu, Mudalir and Ramarayanangar toured major cities, addressed meetings, met with MPs, and wrote letters to the local newspapers to advance their position. Nair died on 17 July 1919 before he could appear. 
After Nair's death, Reddy Naidu became the spokesman. He testified on the 22nd of August. The deputation won the backing of both Liberal and Labour members. The committee's report, issued on 17 November 1919, recommended communal representation in the Madras presidency. The number of reserved seats was to be decided by the local parties and the Madras government. After prolonged negotiations between Justice, Congress, MPA and the British government, a compromise called Meston's Award was reached in March 1920. 28 three urban and 25 rural of the 63 general seats in plural member constituencies were reserved for non-Brahmins. Opposition to non-cooperation movement Unsatisfied with the Montague-Kelmsford reforms and the March 1919 Rowlatt Act, Mahatma Gandhi launched his non-cooperation movement in 1919. He called for a boycott of the legislatures, courts, schools and social functions. Non-cooperation did not appeal to justice, which sought to leverage continued British presence by participating in the new political system. Justice considered Gandhi to be an anarchist threatening social order. The party newspapers Justice, Dravidan and Andhra Prakasika persistently attacked non-cooperation. Party member Mariyadas Ratnaswamy wrote critically of Gandhi and his campaign against industrialization in a pamphlet named The Political Philosophy of Mahatma Gandhi in 1920. K. V. Reddy Naidu also fought non-cooperation. This stance isolated the party. Most political and social organizations supported the movement. Justice parties believed that he associated mostly with Brahmins, though he was not a Brahmin himself. It also favored industrialization. When Gandhi visited Madras in April 1921, he spoke about the virtues of Brahmanism and Brahmin contributions to Indian culture. Justice responded, The meeting was presided over by local Brahmin politicians of Gandhi persuasion, and Mr. Gandhi himself was surrounded by Brahmins of both sexes. A band of them came to the meeting singing hymns. They broke coconut in front of Gandhi, burnt camphor and presented him with holy water in silver basin. There were other marks of deification and, naturally, the vanity of the man was flattered beyond measure. He held forth on the glories of Brahmanism and Brahmanical culture. Not even knowing even the elements of Dravidian culture, Dravidian philosophy, Dravidian literature, Dravidian languages, and Dravidian history, this Gujarati gentleman extolled the Brahmins to the skies at the expense of non-Brahmins, and the Brahmins present must have been supremely pleased and elated. Kandaswamy Chetty sent a letter to the editor of Gandhi's journal Young India, advising him to stay away from Brahmin, non-Brahmin issues. Gandhi responded by highlighting his appreciation of Brahmin contribution to Hinduism and said, I warn the correspondence against separating the Dravidian South from Aryan North. The India today is a blend not only of two, but of many other cultures. The party's relentless campaign against Gandhi, supported by the Madras Mail made him less popular and effective in South India, particularly in southern Tamil districts. Even when Gandhi suspended the movement after the Shori Chowra incident, party newspapers expressed suspicion of him. The party softened on Gandhi only after his arrest, expressing appreciation for his moral worth and intellectual capacity. In office The Government of India Act 1919 implemented the Montague-Kelmsford reforms, instituting a diarchy in Madras Presidency. The diarchical period extended from 1920 to 1937, encompassing five elections. Justice Party was in power for 13 of 17 years, save for an interlude during 1926-30. During the non-cooperation campaign, the Indian National Congress boycotted the November 1920 elections. Justice won 63 of the 98 seats. A. Subarayalu Redier became the first chief minister, soon resigning due to declining health. Ramarayanangar Raja of Panigal, the minister of local self-government and public health replaced him. The party was far from happy with the diarchical system. In his 1924 deposition to the Muddiman Committee, Cabinet Minister Kirma Venkata Reddy Naidu expressed the party's displeasure. I was a minister of development without the forests. I was a minister of agriculture minus irrigation. 
As a Minister of Agriculture I had nothing to do with the Madras Agriculturists Loan Act or the Madras Land Improvement Loans Act. The efficacy and efficiency of a Minister of Agriculture without having anything to do with irrigation, agricultural loans, land improvement loans and famine relief, may better be imagined than described. Then again, I was Minister of Industries without factories, boilers, electricity and water power, mines or labor, all of which are reserved subjects. Internal dissent emerged and the party split in late 1923, when C. R. Reddy resigned and formed a splinter group and allied with Swarajists who were in opposition. The party won the second council elections in 1923, though with a reduced majority. On the first day, the 27th of November 1923, of the new session, a no-confidence motion was defeated 65 to 44, and Ramarayanengar remained in power until November 1926. The party lost in 1926 to Swaraj. The Swaraj party refused to form the government, leading the governor to set up an independent government under P. Subbarayan. Topic: 1930 to 37. After four years in opposition, Justice returned to power. Chief Minister B. Manuswami Naidu's tenure was beset with controversies. The Great Depression was at its height and the economy was crumbling. Floods inundated the southern districts. The government increased the land tax to compensate for the fall in revenues. The Zamindars landowners faction was disgruntled because two prominent landlords the Raja of Babali and the Kumara Raja of Venkatagiri were excluded from the cabinet. In 1930, P. T. Rajan and Naidu has differences over the presidency and Naidu did not hold the annual party confederation for three years. Under M. A. Muthia Chettier, the Zamindars organized a rebel ginger group in November 1930. In the 12th annual confederation of the party held on 10-11 October 1932, the rebel group deposed Naidu and replaced him with the Raja of Babali. Fearing that the Babali faction would move a no-confidence motion against him in the council, Naidu resigned in November 1932 and the Rao became chief minister. After his removal from power, Manuswami Naidu formed a separate party with his supporters. It was called Justice Democratic Party and had the support of 20 opposition members in the Legislative Council. His supporters rejoined the Justice Party after his death in 1935. During this time, party leader L. Sriramulu Naidu served as mayor of Madras. 1940–41 <laughs> Increasing nationalist feelings and factional infighting caused the party to shrink steadily from the early 1930s. Many leaders left to join Congress. Rao is inaccessible to his own party members and tried to curtail the powers of district leaders who had been instrumental in the party's previous successes. The party was seen as collaborators, supporting the British government's harsh measures. Its economic policies were also very unpopular. Its refusal to decrease land taxation in non-Zamindari areas by 12.5% provoked peasant protests led by Congress. Rao, a Zamindar, cracked down on protests, fueling popular rage. The party lost the 1934 elections, but managed to retain power as a minority government because Swaraj the political arm of the Congress refused to participate. In its last years in power, the party's decline continued. The justice ministers drew a large monthly salary 4,333 rupees and 60 paise, compared to the 2,250 rupees in the central provinces at the height of the Great Depression which was sharply criticized by the Madras press including Madras Mail, a traditional backer of the party, attacked its ineptitude and patronage. The extent of the discontent against the justice government is reflected in an article of Zaman Riot. The Justice Party has disgusted the people of this presidency like plague and engendered permanent hatred in their hearts. Everybody, therefore, is anxiously awaiting the fall of the justice regime which they consider tyrannical and inauguration of the Congress administration. Even old women in villages ask as to how long the ministry of the Raja of Babali would continue. Lord Erskine, the governor of Madras, reported in February 1937 to then Secretary of State Zetland that among the peasants, Every sin of omission or commission of the past 15 years is put down to them Bobley's administration. Faced with a resurgent Congress, the party was trounced in the 1937 council and assembly elections. 
After 1937 it ceased to be a political power. Justice's final defeat has been ascribed variously to its collaboration with the British government, the elitist nature of the Justice Party members, loss of scheduled caste and Muslim support and flight of the social radicals to the self-respect movement or in some internal dissension, ineffective organization, inertia and lack of proper leadership. In opposition Justice was in opposition from 1926 to 30 and again from 1937 until it transformed itself to Dravidar Kazhagam in 1944. 1926 to 30 In the 1926 elections, Swaraj emerged as the largest party, but refused to form the government because of its opposition to Diarchy. Justice declined power because it did not have enough seats and due to clashes with Governor Viscount Goshen over issues of power and patronage. Goshen turned to the nationalist independent members. Unaffiliated, P. Subarayan was appointed chief minister. Goshen nominated 34 members to the council to support the new ministry. Initially Justice joined Swaraj in opposing government by proxy. In 1927, they moved a no-confidence motion against Subarayan that was defeated with the help of the governor-nominated members. Halfway through the ministry's term, Goshen convinced Justice to support the ministry. This change came during the Simon Commission's visit to assess the political reforms. After the death of Ramarayanangar in December 1928, justice broke into two factions, the constitutionalists and the ministerialists. The ministerialists were led by N. G. Ranga and favoured allowing Brahmins to join the party. A compromise was reached at the 11th Annual Confederation of the Party and B. Manuswami Naidu was elected as the president. 1930–31 After its crushing defeat at the hands in 1937, Justice lost political influence. The Raja of Babali temporarily retired to tour Europe. The new Congress government under C. Rajagopalachari introduced compulsory Hindi instruction. Under A. T. Panirselvam, one of the few Justice leaders to have escaped defeat in the 1937 elections, Justice joined Peri R. E. V. Ramasamy's Self-Respect Movement to oppose the government's move. The resulting anti-Hindi agitation, brought the party effectively under Periyar's control. When Rao's term ended, Periyar became president on 29 December 1938. Periyar, a former congressman, had a previous history of cooperation with the party. He had left Congress in 1915 after accusing the party of Brahmanism. SRM cooperated closely with Justice in opposing Congress and Swaraj. Periyar had even campaigned for justice candidates in 1926 and 1930. For a few years in the early 1930s, he switched from justice to the communists. After the Communist Party was banned in July 1934, he returned to supporting justice. The anti-Hindi agitations revived justice's sagging fortunes. On 29 October 1939, Rajagopalachari's Congress government resigned, protesting India's involvement in World War II. Madras provincial government was placed under governor's rule. On 21 February 1940, Governor Erskine cancelled compulsory Hindi instruction. Under Periyar's leadership, the party embraced the secession of Dravidistan. Or Dravida Nadu. At the 14th Annual Confederation held in December 1938, Periyar became party leader and a resolution passed pressing Tamil people's right to a sovereign state, under the direct control of the Secretary of State for India. In 1939, Periyar organized the Dravida Nadu Conference for the advocacy of a separate, sovereign and federal republic of Dravida Nadu. Speaking on 17 December 1939, he raised the slogan, Dravida Nadu for Dravidians replacing the Tamil Nadu for Tamils that had been used earlier since 1938. The demand for Dravidistan was repeated at the 15th Annual Confederation in August 1940. On 10 August 1941, Periyar stopped the agitation for Dravida Nadu to help the government in its war efforts. 
When the Cripps mission visited India, a justice delegation, comprising Periyar, WPA Soundarapandian Nadar, N. R. Samyapa Mudalir and Muthia Chettier, met the mission on 30 March 1942 and demanded a separate Dravidian nation. Cripps responded that secession would be possible only through a legislative resolution or through a general referendum. During this period, Periyar declined efforts in 1940 and in 1942 to bring justice to power with Congress's support. Transformation into Dravidar Kazhagam Periyar withdrew the party from electoral politics and converted it into a social reform organization. He explained, If we obtain social self respect, political self respect is bound to follow. Periyar's influence pushed justice into anto Brahmin, anti Hindu, and atheistic stances. During 1942–44, Periyar's opposition to the Tamil devotional literary works Kamba Ramayanam and Periya Puranam, caused a break with Saivite Tamil scholars, who had joined the anti-Hindi agitations. Justice had never possessed much popularity among students, but started making inroads with C. N. Anadurai's help. A group of leaders became uncomfortable with Periyar's leadership and policies and formed a rebel group that attempted to dethrone Periyar. This group included P. Balasubramanian editor of the Sunday Observer, R. K. Shunmagam Chettier, P. T. Rajan and A. P. Patro, C. L. Narasimha Mudalir, Damodaran Naidu and K. C. Subramania Chettier. A power struggle developed between the pro- and anti-Periyar factions. On 27 December 1943, the rebel group convened the party's executive committee and criticized Periyar for not holding an annual meeting after 1940. To silence his critics, Periyar decided to convene the Confederation. On 27 August 1944, Justice's 16th Annual Confederation took place in Salem, where the pro Periyar faction won control. The Confederation passed resolutions compelling party members to renounce British honours and awards such as Rao Bahadur and Dewan Bahadur, drop caste suffixes from their names, resign nominated and appointed posts. The party also took the name Dravidar Kazhagam. DK. Anadurai, who had played an important role in passing the resolutions, became the general secretary of the transformed organization. Most members joined the Dravidar Kazhagam. A few dissidents like P. T. Rajan, Manaparai Tirumalaisami and M. Balasubramania Mudalir did not accept the new changes. Led at first by B. Ramachandra Reddy and later by P. T. Rajan, they formed a party claiming to be the original Justice Party. This party made overtures to the Indian National Congress and supported the Quit India movement. The Justice Party also lent its support to Congress candidates in the elections to the Constituent Assembly of India. It contested nine seats in the 1952 Assembly elections. P. T. Rajan was the sole successful candidate. The party also fielded M. Balasubramania Mudalir from the Madras Lok Sabha constituency in the 1952 Lok Sabha elections. Despite losing the election to T.T. Krishnamachari of the Indian National Congress, Mudalir polled 63,254 votes and emerged runner-up. This new Justice Party did not contest elections after 1952. In 1968, the party celebrated its Golden Jubilee at Madras. Electoral <inaudible> <inaudible> performance <inaudible> 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 Topic. Organization The Justice Party's first officeholders were elected in October 1917. Arkot Ramaswamy Mudalir was the Parachi's first general secretary. The party began writing a constitution in 1920, adopting it on 19 December 1925 during its Ninth Confederation. And the 18th of October 1917 notice in the Hindu, outlining the party's policies and goals, was the nearest it had to a constitution in its early years. Madras City was the center of the party's activities. It functioned from its office at Mount Road, where party meetings were held. Apart from the head office, several branch offices operated in the city. By 1917, the party had established offices at all the district headquarters in the presidency, periodically visited by the Madras based leaders. The party had a 25-member executive committee, a president, four vice-presidents, a general secretary and a treasurer. 
After the 1920 elections, some attempts were made to mimic European political parties. A chief whip was appointed and council members formed committees. Article 6 of the Constitution made the party president the undisputed leader of all non-Brahmin affiliated associations and party members in the Legislative Council. Article 14 defined the membership and role of the Executive Committee and tasked the General Secretary with implementing Executive Committee decisions. Article 21 specified that a «provincial confederation» of the party be organized annually, although as of 1944, 16 confederations had been organized in 27 years. The following is the list of presidents of the Justice Party and their terms. Topic. Works Topic Legislative initiatives During its years in power, Justice passed a number of laws with lasting impact. Some of its legislative initiatives were still in practice as of 2009. On 16 September 1921, the first Justice Government passed the first Communal Government Order G. O. Oh, number 613, thereby becoming the first elected body in the Indian legislative history to legislate reservations, which have since become standard. The Madras Hindu Religious Endowment Act, introduced on 18 December 1922 and passed in 1925, brought many Hindu temples under the direct control of the state government. This act set the precedent for later Hindu Religious and Charitable Endowment acts and the current policy of Tamil Nadu. The Government of India Act of 1919 prohibited women from becoming legislators. The first Justice Government reversed this policy on 1 April 1921. Voter qualifications were made gender neutral. This resolution cleared the way for Dr. Mutulakshmi Reddy's nomination to the council in 1926, when she became the first woman to become a member of any legislature in India. In 1922, during the first Justice Ministry before relationships with scheduled castes soured, the council officially replaced the terms Panchamar or Pariyar which were deemed derogatory with Adi Dravidar to denote the scheduled castes of the presidency. The Madras Elementary Education Act of 1920 introduced compulsory education for boys and girls and increased elementary education funding. It was amended in 1934 and 1935. The Act penalized parents for withdrawing their children from schools. The Madras University Act of 1923 expanded the administrative body of the University of Madras and made it more representative. In 1920 the Madras Corporation introduced the Mid-Day Meal Scheme with the approval of the Legislative Council. It was a breakfast scheme in a corporation school at Thousand Lights, Madras. Later it expanded to four more schools. This was the precursor to the free noon meal schemes introduced by K. Kamaraj in the 1960s and expanded by M. G. Ramachandran in the 1980s. The State Aid to Industries Act, passed in 1922 and amended in 1935, advanced loans for the establishment of industries. The Malabar Tenancy Act of 1931, first introduced in September 1926, controversially strengthened the legal rights of agricultural tenants and gave them the right to occupy land in some cases. Universities Rivalry between the Tamil and Telugu members of Justice Party led to the establishment of two universities. The rivalry had existed since the party's inception and was aggravated during the first Justice Ministry because Tamil members were excluded from the cabinet. When the proposal to set up Andhra University long demanded by leaders like Khanda Venkatapaya and Patabi Sitaramaya was first raised in 1921, it was opposed by Tamil members including C. Natesa Mudalir. The Tamils argued that it was hard to define Andhras or the Andhra University. To appease the disgruntled Tamil members like J. N. Ramanathan and Raja of Ramnad, Theogaraya Chetty inducted a Tamil member T. N. Sivananam Pillai in the Second Justice Ministry in 1923. This cleared the way for the passage of Andhra University Bill on 6 November 1925, with Tamil support. The institution opened in 1926 with C. R. Reddy as its first vice-chancellor. This led to calls for the establishment of a separate Tamil university, because the Brahmin-dominated Madras University did not welcome non-Brahmins. On the 22nd of March 1926, a Tamil University committee chaired by Sivananam Pillai began to study feasibility and in 1929 Animalai University opened. 
It was named for Annamalai Chettier who provided a large endowment. Infrastructure The second Justice Chief Minister, Ramarianangar's years in power saw improvements to the infrastructure of the city of Madras, particularly the development of the village of Thiagaroya Nagar. His administration implemented the Madras Town Planning Act of 7 September 1920, creating residential colonies to cope with the city's rapid population growth. The Long Tank, a 5 km miles long and 2 km miles wide water body, formed an arc along the city's western frontier from Nungabakam to Saidapet and was drained in 1923. Development west of the Long Tank had been initiated by the British government in 1911 with the construction of a railway station at the village of Marmalan, Mambalam. Ramarayanangar created a residential colony adjoining this village. The colony was named Thiagaroya Nagar, or T. Nagar after just deceased Thiagaroya Chetty. T. Nagar centered around a park named Panigal Park after Ramarayanangar, the Raja of Panigal. The streets and other features in this new neighborhood were named after prominent officials and party members, including Muhammad Usman, Muhammad Habibullah, O Thanikachalam Chetir, Natessa Mutalir, and WPA Soundarapandian Nadar. Justice governments also initiated slum clearance schemes and built housing colonies and public bathing houses in the congested areas. They also established the Indian School of Medicine in 1924 to research and promote Ayurveda, Siddha, and Unani schools of traditional medicine. Political legacy The Justice Party served as a non-Brahmin political organization. Though non-Brahmin movements had been in existence since the late 19th century, Justice was the first such political organization. The party's participation in the governing process under Diarchy taught the value of parliamentary democracy to the educated elite of the Madras state. Justice and Dravidar Kazhagam were the political forerunners of the present-day Dravidian parties such as Dravida Munaitra Kazhagam and Anna Dravida Munaitra Kazhagam, which have ruled Tamil Nadu a successor state Madras presidency without interruption since 1967. Controversies Attitude towards Brahmins The Justice Party began as a political organization to represent the interests of non-Brahmins. Initially it did not accept Brahmins as party members. However, along with other groups including Europeans, they were allowed to attend meetings as observers. After the defeat in 1926, calls were made to make the party more inclusive and more nationalist in character. Opponents, especially Peri R. E. V. Ramasamy's self-respect faction protected the original policy. At a tripartite conference between justice, ministerialists and constitutionalists in 1929, a resolution was adopted recommending the removal of restrictions on Brahmins joining the organization. In October 1929, the Executive Committee placed a resolution to this effect for approval before the party's 11th annual confederation at Neller. Supporting the resolution, Manuswami Naidu spoke as follows So long as we exclude one community, we cannot as a political speak on behalf of or claim to represent all the people of our presidency. If, as we hope, provincial autonomy is given to the provinces as a result of the reforms that may be granted, it should be essential that our federation should be in a position to claim to be a truly representative body of all communities. What objection can there be to admit such Brahmins as are willing to subscribe to the aims and objects of our federation? It may be that the Brahmins may not join even if the ban is removed. But surely our federation will not thereafter be open to objection on the ground that it is an exclusive organization. Former Education Minister A. P. Patro supported Naidu's view. However this resolution was vehemently opposed by Peri R. and R. K. Shanmukam Chetty and failed. Speaking against letting Brahmins into the party, Peri R. explained, At a time when non-Brahmins in other parties were gradually coming over to the Justice Party, being fed up with the Brahmins' methods and ways of dealing with political questions, it was nothing short of folly to think of admitting him into the ranks of the Justice Party. 
The party began to accept Brahmin members only in October 1934. The pressure to compete with the Justice Party forced the Congress Party to let more non Brahmins into the party power structure. The party's policies disrupted the established social hierarchy and increased the animosity between the Brahmin and non Brahmin communities. Nationalism The Justice Party was loyal to the British Empire. In its early years, Justice opposed the Home Rule movement. It did not send representatives to the Central Legislative Assembly, the national parliamentary body. During 1916–20, it focused on obtaining communal representation and participating in the political process. During the non-cooperation period, it joined with the Madras Mail in opposing and denouncing Gandhi and the nationalists. Sir Theogaraya Chetty, president of the party from 1916 to 1924, publicly expressed his view on the floor of the assembly that, "...political prisoners were worser than dacoits and robbers." Amidst opposition from nationalists including members of his own party as A. P. Patro. The then Justice Party government headed by the Raja of Panigal banned the publication and distribution of poems written by Indian nationalist Subramanya Bharathi. However, by the mid-1920s, the party adopted more nationalist policies. It discarded its earlier disdain of spinning thread by hand and Swadeshi economics. In 1925, the party's annual confederation passed a resolution supporting indigenous industries and Swadeshi enterprise. This shift enabled Justice to better compete against Swaraj to whom Justice was slowly losing ground. The term, Swaraj, or self-rule, itself was included in the constitution. Madras branch president C. R. Reddy led this change. To Justicites, Swaraj meant partial self-government under British rule, not independence. The constitution stated, to obtain Swaraj for India as a component of the British Empire at as early a date as possible by all peaceful and legitimate and constitutional means." The historical record does not clearly indicate whether justice condemned the Jallianwala Bagh massacre. The party's shift toward nationalist policies was reversed in the 1930s, during the terms of Munasami Naidu and Raja of Babali. During the civil disobedience campaign, the justice governments did not protest the police's harsh measures. However, with nationalism growing in the country and a string of Congress victories in local elections in 1934, the party reversed course again towards nationalism. Justice turned to Perry R. E. V. Ramaswamy as its champion. Ramaswamy had drifted away in the early 1930s. In exchange for their support in campaigning and propaganda, the Justicites included the self respect movement's socialist erode program in their election manifesto. The new program had much in common with Congress's nationalist policies such as prohibition. Topic rumors about Justice Party Justice Party, which had captured power in 1920, claiming to represent all non-Brahmins in the presidency gradually lost the support of many communities. Under Theogaraya Chetty and later Panaganti Ramarayanangar, the party came to represent a few non-Brahmin Shudra castes, alienating scheduled castes and Muslims. During the first Justice Ministry, Muslim council members supported the government, but withdrew in a disagreement over appointments. Explaining the Muslim disillusionment with the Justice Party, Abbas Ali Khan, a Muslim member said in late 1923, I have found out from actual experience that whenever the question of experience came in, they always preferred a Mudalir, a Nayadu, a Chetir, or a Pillai but not a Muhammadan Justice Party never regained Muslim support, because it failed to convince the group that high caste Hindus had not received a disproportionate allocation of jobs opened up by communal reservation, the fracture with scheduled castes came during the same time period. Period. After T. M. Nair's death, Adi Dravidas were slowly pushed out of the party. The polyanthropy incidents also called as the B and C Mill Strike soured the relationship of non-Brahmin Sudra castes like Velalas, Bari Chetis, Balia Naidus, Kamas and Kapis with Parayars. On the 11th of May 1921, Bats and caste Hindus went on strike in the Carnatic textile mill. On 20 June, workers in Buckingham Mill followed. The Parayars were quickly persuaded to end the strike, but the caste Hindus continued to strike. This created animosity between the two groups. In an ensuing clash between the police and caste Hindus, several were killed. Justice leaders accused the government of creating problems by pampering the Parayars. 
The party paper Justice claimed, public opinion, holds the present deplorable state of affairs has been brought about partly at all events by the undue pampering of the Adi Dravidas by the officials of the Labour Department, and partly by the, perhaps, unconscious encouragement given to them by some police officers. Oh. Thanikachala Chetty raised this issue in Madras Legislative Council on 12 October, which led to an acrimonious debate between Justice Members and S. Srinivasa Iyengar, a Brahmin law member of the Governor's Executive Council and Lionel Davidson, the Home Member. Davidson blamed Justice, saying, it is no longer merely a labor dispute confined to strikers and non-strikers, but a faction fight inflamed by caste prejudices. M. C. Raja, the main representative of scheduled castes in the council agreed with Davidson. A Adi Dravida reader of the Madras Mail condemned Justice in the same way that T. M. Nair had once condemned the Brahmins. Soon after the polyanthropy incidents, Raja and Parayars left the party. <laughs> Notes <laughs>